Hello everybody. So uh, today we're doing vapor pressure, which is lab 10. So you're going to be measuring the enthalpy of vaporization of water and the vapor enthalpy of fusion of water. So vaporization is when it turns from a liquid to a gas. Fusion is when it turns from a liquid to a solid. You are going to be using the clausius clapeyron equation to do this, but this is a very complicated equation, so we're going to need to do some measurements along the way and some conversions. Okay, so first of all, we're going to have our system we're going to have this U tube that contains water in it, and on one side it's stoppered, and on the other side it's open, and we've got a thermometer in it. And so what we're measuring is, is we're measuring this bubble of trapped air and vapor, water vapor on one side, and on the other side we're open to the atmosphere and atmospheric pressure. And so we're just going to be measuring the size of that air bubble that's in there at different temperatures. And that's all the measurement is. Okay, so what we're showing here are the measurements that we're taking. These measurements aren't the ones we're going to use because they're a little bit off. Uh, in order to film it, we had to dye the water, which isn't great for this. And we also had to keep the uh, little tube way out of our water bath. It would be much better if it were much deeper in the water bath so everything was the same temperature. Um, so this is all we're basically doing, is we're taking the size of this bubble by measuring the little marks on the side of the, the pipette marks and checking the temperature. We do this over and over again. Uh, so this is one of those cases where the video is going to be better. It's taking about you know a few seconds, a minute to go through all of these measurements. It takes over an hour to do them all in person. Uh, so definitely a benefit of doing the, the video side of the lab. So you make all these measurements and you get the data. And so here's the raw data. We have the volume of the bubble, we have the temperature, and we have the barometric pressure of the outside air. But that's not quite getting us to this clausius clapeyron equation yet. So instead we have to figure out how much air is in there because we only want the vapor pressure, the water vapor to do this calculation. So first we have to calculate the air and we do that by using the values at zero degrees or it's zero degrees Celsius, where there's no vapor pressure, vape, water vapor, only air. So then you can do a subtraction to figure out how much of the barometric pressure was actually water vapor pressure, which gets you close to this equation. Now we have an actual pressure of the water vapor. But finally, we got to turn it into the natural log of the pressure and one over the temperature to get everything to match up with the clausius clapeyron equation. Okay, so we've got an example of this at room temperature. Now you can finally make a graph like this one here, and the slope can get you the enthalpy of vaporization if you take the slope times r and change the sign. All of that is necessary to finally get out the enthalpy of vaporization. All of these calculations from these measurements to, to get it to finally work. Um, here's an example of how you would use the clausius clapeyron equation just using two points to calculate out a vapor pressure. You can also use a similar equation to do the, the measurements there. So then we're going to do the second part, which is the fusion, the enthalpy of fusion. Uh, with the fusion and the vaporization values, you can even get the sublimation, so you can get all of the phase transitions. So in this case, we're not going to have any videos of taking the measurements because it is just using a coffee cup calorimeter, just like we did back in 1127. Uh, we're basically taking water, we're adding ice, and we're seeing what the change in the pressure, in the temperature is. And from that, we can calculate out what the enthalpy of fusion is, because that's the difference in between the energy change of the warm water and of the ice. So we have to measure out all these things. We're going to assume that the calorimeter constant of our coffee cup calorimeter is zero. And so this would be an example of the calculations that you would do. Uh, so don't use these values, use the ones that we actually did measure values from. Here is the table of the actual values that we want you to use. And so using these values, you should be able to get the, the values that you're going to use in the, in the post lab quiz. All right, so that's everything you need to do the lab. So good luck.